PHP lesson 1.1 <clears throat> okay the first thing you need to do is you need to get a PHP environment running now there's three elements to, to having a PHP environment the first is you need a web server you need something that represents a web server <clears throat> now we're not gonna install a whole Linux web server sitting there just just for us to develop applications because that just take too much time so wh what we do is we install Apache on this on this machine and that'll create an environment, a web server environment that you could work on and it would look at the applications and whatever you write as 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 web server programs now the other two elements that you need is the one is PHP that's the parsing program, it, it looks at the PHP code that you write and makes sense of it all you know it looks at it as PHP and goes through it and parses it and it gives it back, back as, as HTML the PHP stands for pre -pro pre-processed hypertext page which means it does all kinds of mathematical cal calculations you can do if statements pretty much anything you could do in C you can do in PHP but then the parsing system the PHP itself that we're gonna install will will look at the PHP and give it back to the browser as HTML because the only code you can view in a browser is basically is basically HTML and maybe JavaScript and then the third element that you need is MySQL, which is your database program. It's basically where you store all your client details. I mean, it'll all be clear in the episodes to come. Now, you can install Apache PHP and and all those things on its own, or you could just download WAMP, which is just so much easier. It saves you a lot of time, and you don't have to configure ports and go crazy. I, I recommend installing those three elements on your own one day just to just to ensure that you know what you know what's going on behind behind all these programs <clears throat> okay so yeah you can go to wampserver.com and just download the whole wamp thing which installs wamp stands for uh, windows apache mysql and php now if you're on linux you can install lamp which is pretty much the same it's just linux apache mysql php now, I mean, it's pretty easy. You just go here, download the thing, install it, and then once it's installed, you'll have a icon on your desktop, and web server will be there. You just start that, and the red indicates that it's still looking for something, and there, it's found. It's found everything. When it goes white, you know it's got it's got all those three elements working perfectly. Now, this makes it very easy. You can just go here to your localhost and there we see we've got some something running here this site is running team viewer uh, okay let's start off with that so you got your local host environment now this represents your web server your local web server so you can write all your applications on here basically i'll show you now how to how to write an application that will run in this environment but you can write a whole entire program on here and once you're done you can just upload your php files to your actual web server and that that's the that's how convenient this whole system is now <coughs> to to let's let's start with hello world that's the simplest program we want to just display hello world in our localhost environment so i'm going to go here and say www directory now this is the, the directory that um, you'll also find these sort of directories on a web server it might be a longer directory shorter but apache basically goes and looks at this directory and it looks for an in index file and that's 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 as easy as it is you'll in you'll upload an index file here and when you go here to localhost it'll it'll automatically look at that and run it and pass the php and do everything you want so let's go there okay it's funny because there is no php file in there let me just okay let's make a new directory let's say temp. We're working in a temp directory and in there we're just going to create a new file we'll call it a text document called index.php yes and okay let's open this file you can write PHP notepad or anything preferably use Dreamweaver but for our testing purposes you don't need much more than that so let's start with a basic application these PHP um, tags basically just tells the server that whatever is to follow is PHP if you go down here and you say HTML, because we've closed this tag, it'll just it'll just look at this as, as normal HTML. So you can you can write in your hello world 
world from HTML and up here because it's PHP we use the command echo to write anything to the screen let's say hello world from PHP now uh, echo just basically is a command to tell the PHP parser that whatever is to follow it, it needs to output that to the screen now there's a few other commands you can use like print and so on but standard is to just use echo so now theoretically if we save this we'll have, we'll have um, two hello worlds, one will be from PHP and one will be from HTML both will be outputted as HTML but we know that this one has been passed by the by the PHP parsing system so let us save this um, I'm just going to say let's call this index2.php save and let's go in here we'll say forward slash temp forward slash index2.php uh, ok that sucks let's see what is the problem here temp I've got my temp directory I think it might be running this on a different port. Yes. Okay, that's a good <coughs> that's a good thing that actually happened because um PHP runs through well all web applications runs runs through port 80. Now because you're running this on your local host and you you set up your own basic web server, you can you can define different ports to run it through. Now your local host, you can write there local host or you can just write 127.0.0.1. That's the that's that's always the address for localhost. It looks back to your own PC and goes goes to your web server or your fake web server and, and look at what's in there. Now you can because I've already got Apache, I had Apache running on the system before and all that. Um, <clears throat> that was already running on port 80. So I installed this WAMP thing and I needed it to run on a different port because I already had Apache running on port 80 on port 80. So I think I thought let me just let this one run on 88 otherwise you've got to go through a whole mission to uninstall Apache and whatever so you can basically have 20,000 WAMP servers running on different ports now always remember that this 127.0.0.1 that's your that's the address for your localhost so you'll go HTTP colon slash slash 127.0.0.1 and then colon again and your port and your directory where, wherever the you know wherever you basically working and you can always find that by going www directory from this icon here and it'll take you to your directories copy your PHP files in there and they'll be passed and output it to the screen as HTML now you can see this hello world from PHP and hello world from HTML which means we've successfully passed the PHP and we've also successfully given output with the HTML. Now if you go view page source you'll see it's all just HTML. So all the PHP is happening in the background and that makes it very convenient because we could do if statements we can just go crazy with getting information from the database and you know <coughs> do whatever you want the stuff that you can do and see and output it to the to the browser as HTML which is really very convenient. And let me just show you guys how, how to set up this port 88. It's very easy especially with WAMP. You don't have to set all kinds of weird stuff like back in the day before we could install this, these three as one package. We'll go to Apache, that's our web server, and tell it not to look at port 80 anymore. We wanted to look at port 88. Now let's search for the word port. Port, port, port. Okay, okay that's a bad search. Let's search for port 88. And there we go. So you would have been searching for port 80 because it's always defined as port 80 when you just install it. But now we wanted to run on 88, so you'll just put in 88 there, save, and very important, restart all services. Otherwise, it wouldn't pick up your new port. Once that's done, you can run your program, and that's the end of tutorial 1.1.